October 2014, and we are starting our regular Saturday webinar. And welcome everybody, welcome mm. Chris, Farm, Frantishek, Gabriel, Ayan, uh, Roxy, Sabrina. Hello. Hello. Barbara. Hello. Barbara. And C. Oh, hi, T. Nice to see your face. Nice to meet you. Hello. Uh, Welcome, everybody. And we can introduce people in the room. Okay, starting over here, we have Sharon. Sandy. Sandy, I'm not, sorry. <laughs> Sandy, Angie, me, R Max, and Chris. I, I don't know why I want to hear Thanks, everybody, for coming. <laughs> been a while. All right. Uh, no, it, it's not that. You remind me of something. Uh, my first announcement is, uh, it looks like around Christmas, I, my family and I are moving to Chicago. So I'm looking for connections in Chicago, I'm looking for information about uh, schools, where to live. It's very, very sophisticated. You have to like really research this stuff to not to make a mistake and not to uh, rent in the wrong place. Chicago is sophisticated, almost like Moscow. Right. Yeah, but we will continue our things uh, uh, through the through the internet. It's it's nice we are distributed. We are not physically bound to a certain place. It's nice to move, and it's not the first move I did. I'm an immigrant, professional immigrant. I moved many many times. So I, I, if anybody knows people in Chicago, uh, introduce me to them. I need just practical help to figure out where. And if I travel there like next week, I need a place to stay. So introductions will help. Okay. Oh, so this is the first I've heard that that's for sure. It's uh, um, it's as for sure as it can be in this 3D world, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. You never know. But, uh, so far. So you're moving good. soon? Uh, around Christmas. Around Christmas. Oh, okay. If things are go as planned. Yes. Right now, it's kind of as sure as it is in uh, 3D world, but you know, things uh, change constantly. Definitely. Uh, um, Go ahead. Jesus, yes, Jesus came yesterday through Jim. That was a big news. But it wasn't recorded in any way, shape, or form. However, he was there for an hour. Um, and uh, Angie was there. It was with her metaphysical group out of, of ladies out in Canandaigua. And it was quite a, a good thing. They were very, after it was over, they were all overwhelmed and they didn't know what to say. So <laughs> it was, I don't remember everything, but I know that it was quite good for each one person, every person there. Yes. Because they had asked to bring someone through that was, that could give them a message and tell them about their gifts and skills and things. And who better to do that than Jesus? And Jesus came through and talked to each one individually. So it was interesting. Uh. Here's a technical question. Oh, about Jesus. Yeah, um, he didn't answer questions first time. He refused to answer, but yesterday he did answer questions. Yes, he did. In fact, he had a lesson, I think. Yes, he did, he did have a lesson. He did have a lesson, but he also did talk to each person individually and answer their questions. So we invite Jesus again. That would be great. Okay. Uh, time for him is nothing, so... So uh, why not to do it next day too for, <laughs> for the other audience? We would appreciate that, and we have tons of questions today. Okay. Um, technical thing is, I, I started this question and answer thing. Um, so people from outside, we have now seven viewers. Uh, people from outside of the group can still ask questions. So can anybody from inside that group see the questions and answer application on the left? I can, can do it and read it. I, I can do it if someone writes it. I can. Yeah, if uh, just you know read it and if anything interesting comes up, just um, Gabriel voice voice the uh, questions. Last time it was more like chat that there were more statements than questions, but I had to read and kind of pick something which is actually was was a question. So people from outside. Yeah. Um, on your view screen, uh, on your view at YouTube, there is on the left bottom there is question answer application. You can type questions here, and uh, people will read it. Uh, and type also what entity you want to have the yeah. question spoken to. Sometimes it's personal just to the entity, and you should write it just to one entity. 
Yeah, so, so they should probably just wait to see who shows up and then type the question. Yes. And for people, for people who are in the group, uh, in the audience, uh, you can form your question waiting line, line uh, within chat chat uh, window. And if anybody is on the cell phone, cannot access chat window, then you have just to speak. And again, I ask everybody to mute your microphones when Jim is channeling because it improves the quality of the sound really much. But when there is discussion, unmute yourself. Uh, can you give me yeah. so I can Do mute it. people? Max. Yes, I will. Yes. Anything else? Uh, Any questions? Who do we want to invite? Um, I I just Jesus is good. <laughs> Pandorian Pandorian would definitely be good. We have not talked to a Pandorian. No, we have not. They've been around me a lot. That reminds me, uh, Rob Gothier, you know who that is, contacted yeah. me and told me that there is another alien coming to me from the Orion system, from the seventh planet of, there was a lot of information. He's a high spiritual being named Almatok, and he's in the videos whenever he watches them, but I am not channeling him yet. So, but he sees this entity wanting to channel with me and knows that it's a very, he knows all about this entity. He looked him up and everything, but um, to this point he has not come through me. But he's, whenever he says he watches a video, he can see this particular entity. So, and he says he will change things, and I'm not sure exactly what that means, but he will sort of change the way things are presented maybe. But I have no idea what that would look like or sound like. But I have gotten that message from Rob Gothier. So you know quite a lot about Orions, right? Yeah. Orions are aliens. In the same word, aliens are basically. Uh, uh, they lived in big part of the Europe, uh, India, Iran. Uh, northern part, I guess this Aryan idea of Nazi Germans was also coming from that idea. Um, and I guess Orions are structured, as far as we know, from channelings, is are, they're very sort of hierarchical, and it is traditional. Our structures, our government structures are built after Orion, after Orion empires. Um, so they're military structured, very 3D. Wow. But, you know, Orion, I guess, it's a huge thing. It's... Uh, and they might have evolved since then in a different thing. So, but but basically they were in control. They were dealing with our military. They were consulting, and um, they they I, I assume they have still a very huge influence on us. So so speaking speaking to Orions would make a lot of sense. I would assume there are positive, negative, and just individual Orions, and yeah. many of them would maybe even look like humans very much. So right. so, so that's as as far as I know. But and, and they're connected to Zeta Grays and to Reptilians. That, that is pretty strong connection, which I hear from often. Okay. When, I'm going to add a disclaimer. Rob, if you, if you listen to this and I said something wrong, please help me correct it. So I don't want to misrepresent the Orion uh, Almatak. And Orion is the constellation, right? Yes, and he's on the seventh planet. I can't remember all the information. But he's on the seventh planet of his solar we, system. We can assume that they're they're all they're all uh, um, not positive, you know. Of course not. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, right. Of course. So, and and actually, I think there were. Um, I think uh, Gert Furnier had admitted some Orions. Yeah. 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 Uh, Yes, yeah. they mentioned that there are some Orions in Grukvicknir in the colonies. I'm not sure that I don't think they're ch uh, ch a training languages, but they are training telepathy. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. So interesting. Yes, I thought it was. And again, I invite everybody mm -hmm. to contact me. Mm -hmm. Who can physical, tangible experiences? Contact me. Share with me your experiences and confirmations. Something which you see when you awake. Like sightings in the sky, sightings in your room, feelings in your body, that, that sort of thing. Something which you which is not a dream. I, I collect this information and that helps me a lot. 
Thank you for sharing those who share with me. Thank you for sharing. Okay. I think I'm ready to play music, and if you go want to leave, uh, you can leave. Oh, if I want to leave, I can go. <laughs> Bye, everybody. I'll see you later. Bye. Um, we'll see who comes through today. Is there any other things, anything else that anybody has before we start? I'm good. Um, okay. Lakesh is always welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Lakesh is always welcome. He knows that. <laughs> as long as Sonic is here, he comes. Okay, very good. <laughs> oh, let's see who comes today. I'm not... I don't have any idea. That music, a famous Mexican spirit. <laughs> it's good, I like it. I am Jesus of Nazareth. You have called me back for some reason. Thank you for coming again. Welcome. Is there questions for me that need to be answered? I see that your world is in great confusion. Great trying to find the love that is inherent within them. But having so much trouble with finding the love in others, which is always there as well. There is that petition between you that you build when you cannot understand someone else. And because of these misunderstandings, you build up a block between you, your soul, and the next. But if you can free that unconditional love which you have been speaking of earlier, and at other times, you must love yourself first, unconditionally. If you cannot do that, you cannot love anyone else unconditionally. So you must find that within yourself first. That unconditional love for yourself, no matter what your flaws are, no matter what you've done, no matter where you've been that may have not been where you should have been, forgive that within you to accept your unconditional love because I forgive you 
The universe forgives you, but we cannot get to you with all the things that you've blocked yourself with with all the love that you are not giving because you do not love yourself. Do you understand? Some of you like yourself. But to unconditionally love yourself is a different thing. Forgive yourself. I spoke of this last time I was here. Forgive yourself for those things that don't matter anymore. And if they still matter, then you need to find forgiveness with someone else, perhaps, or maybe more than one person. But when you find that you have forgiven them and they have forgiven you, then you can forgive yourself and find that what is in here, what was born into you in unconditional love, can come out in the same way. Now I know, I am not the only prophet that walked the earth. Buddha and Kung, many others, many, the Dalai Lama, and those that have been enlightened and speak to the people, and speak of love and understanding, and the motives behind the world and behind all the things of love that they do, and become enlightened and so light that they can move out of their bodies and move into the atmosphere, which I could do it myself, but at that time it was a time of three third dimensional understanding. And we needed to bring everyone into a third dimensional understanding of what spirit is. And that is what I'll do today. But the laws have changed. As they the laws changed from the Old Testament to the New Testament to the present time, they have already changed. You do not live in the same kind of society. You do not live in the same kind of world that I lived in back then. 2,000 years is a long time for your society. Much has happened. Things have been learned. Understanding of science. So therefore, the laws of love must be given in a different way. Why? Because it's a different atmosphere. It's a different realization. It's a different intellect. And therefore, you bring your heart to that era which you can communicate with. Do you, do you understand that? We communicate together in a certain voice. I communicated in a certain voice back then, and my father communicated in a certain voice in the Old Testament, which has been so flawed over the years that it matters almost not anymore. There are still lessons to be learned, but the truth there was something different than what the truth is now. Do you make? Does that make sense to you? Yes. Good. Because you, some people say truth is immutable. Truth is immutable when you know it in the now. The now truth is immutable. Does that make sense to you? Because it does change. Everything changes. The universe changes. People change. Your, the centuries change things. Time changes things. Everything is subject to change. It's one of the laws of the universe. That everything will change. Things live, things die, but they do not die in spirit. Spirit is eternal. Spirit moves on, continues on, and learns its great journey into the future from every now. I'm not sure that you quite understand everything that I'm saying, but the love that you show for each other, unconditional, must come from an unconditional place. If this place in you is not unconditional, it cannot come out unconditional. You may say the words unconditional love, but they will see that there is conditions. Someone will see those conditions and they will they may tell you about them. However, 
true unconditional love is an example, a teacher. It does not say you have to change. It's just an example. It accepts everything about you without question. All the good, all the bad, all the indifferent about you. It accepts who you are in your perfect world without question. And then is an example to others. And if they find that there is no unconditional, if the, the unconditional love within them is not pure, if it is not pure, let us put it that way, then they will know it because they see it, they will see it as the example is given, as it comes out and doesn't judge them, as it comes out and doesn't say to them that, doesn't give them a lesson to be learned about how bad they are, or how they should be good, or anything of this nature, but it will just be there and accepting and inclusive and loving. Do you understand? Uh, we have another guest. Just pull it, pull it, just pull it. It's locked. Yeah, please come in. All right, uh, first question is from Barbara. Uh, do, do, I already to answer questions. One moment. Give her a chance to sit. We do not want Barbara's question to be interrupted. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. I was running late because I wasn't sure if I was coming. They have this big event at Taps Hill. Chairman Jesus. Is it? Oh. Barbara, you may ask your question now. Barbara, you muted. You have to unmute. Still muted? I do not hear her. Still muted. No sound. Just type your question, we'll read it. Yeah, I would say that people can uh, turn their question in for, in Q and A. It works. Yeah. Is there a question? Barbara, you're muted. Type your question. Uh, who is next after Barbara? Yes. Um, Theo had a question. He says uh, maybe Master Jesus has a message for me about my mental struggle. I went through the last two years. I can, can I almost left this purification process behind me because I'm so tired. I love you very much, you know. Let me give you a word, my friend. You are tired, so relax. Let me tell you that the struggle has been a lesson that you came back to learn in this lifetime, in this third dimension, in this realm that you call 3D. But, you see, you are at the end of the lesson now. There will be time for you to relax and recover. And you can get rid of many of the things that you struggled with in the past because you blamed yourself for much of it. You blamed your other people for much of it. And now it is time to let it be what it is. Learn the lesson and let it go. Does that make sense to Theo? Please get back to me. Um, you cannot answer right away. That is fine. What is the next question? But there is um, more for me to tell Theo, but it is for him to understand first that this lesson is learned or not and he will know the answer to that I believe it is learned okay well he answers um, I'm gonna um, <coughs> as uh, Barbara's question was if if you had any messages for her 
your health is in question at the moment. There are times for you that you feel so bad that it's hard for you to manage. However, let me give you a blessing. Let me send you some energy. Believe that this is something that is for you. Believe that it, this is something that will help move you forward mentally, spiritually, and physically. And your soul will enlighten. You will feel lighter, you will be lighter, and you will understand why the things around you must be the way they are. And your physicality, although severe at times, will not bother you as much. The healing process for you had begun already, had begun already, and you know it, but then it went back to where it was. But you know what? In this realm, this lesson of this physical ailment tells you many things. Find the knowledge in it before it can be removed. Because there, are, there is something about this, the way this is, that tells you about your internal being, emotional, physical, and spiritual, and how you connect to the world, and how you are seen by the world. Let that unconditional love flow as I give you the energy. Let it awaken some things inside you and heal some things inside you. It is not for me to heal you entirely at this moment. That is not what I am to do at this time, because I know that. But understand that there is healing in your possession. Do you understand that? She said yes. Very good. Healing is within your possession with my help and with the right understanding and the right spirit of thankfulness and understanding is the key word here because there are things yet that you do not understand about the condition and why it is there and what it's teaching you. I will help you with that. Who um, is next? Um, I'm next. This is Sabrina. Sabrina. Welcome. Thank you. Um, my question is also about my health. Yes. Um, I've been doing a lot better um, with the help of Tapet, but I was wondering um, if there's anything you could help me with or help me figure out you're faced with many burdens right now in your soul. There's, your soul is heavy. You get lighter, but it then gets darker again. Let me tell you that your physicality, the soul lightning, will heal, heal you. Because as you, as you are coming out of the darkness of misunderstanding, you will find the light of healing. Does this make sense to you? Yes. Things have been misrepresented to you, but this is a great lesson for you because you are a speaker for many. And to be a speaker for many, you must understand many. Does that tell you something? Yes. I, I understand. I just don't understand why so many lessons. And that's what I'm struggling with. Don't question that. Do not struggle with it. Let it happen. Let it be. Bring out your unconditional self, and the lessons will be learned. And you will not have to struggle with them. They will come more easily to you. Your struggle is with yourself and not with anyone else. Not with anyone else. Not with any other entity. Not with any other being in the universe. But your struggle is within yourself. When you learn that the struggle within yourself can be calmed, can be answered by purity of spirit, by purity of the what is born into you, the spirit, 
you will understand that the struggle is a lesson and it does not have to be fought anymore. It can be loved. Love the lesson. Love the person that is you believe is the object of the lesson. Love yourself because that's where the struggle is. Your struggle is with you and no one else. It cannot be with anyone else. Do you understand? Yeah, yes, I, I understand and that's the thing that I've I gone back and forth, back and forth and then... Let me I, give you a blessing. One moment. Okay. Feel the energy of love and blessing and understanding, goodness and truth in this now. The truth of this now is that you are struggling and you don't have to because you can understand unconditional love and unconditional love understands you. Feel this in your heart. Let it come out. Let it burst forth. Give yourself the joy that you deserve. Thank you for that. Um, I had one more question in terms of uh, Mother Mary. Mother Mary. Yes. Yes. I'm. I. I don't know how to express it. Um, for I think about her a lot. Yes. She's an interceder. Do you know what an intercession an intercession is? No. Intercession is when someone takes your prayers to God. You don't need her as an intercessor, but you feel more familiar talking to you. You don't need an intercessor. No one needs one. But she can be to those that cannot speak directly to God because they feel unworthy. But let me tell you about her. She was a human being. She was from the third dimension. She was very blessed. The reason why she was blessed is because her innocence was still pure at a young teenage age. And she gave thanks, love, and honor to everyone. She loved God. She loved spirit. She loved truth. And this is why you go to her. She is an example of who you are as a woman. What you should be as a woman. And what you are as a woman. Because she is no greater than you in many senses. You look to her to bring you the things that you need to cope with with your life. She had much to cope with as well. Can you imagine what she had to cope with? And in, in those times it was even more difficult to cope with those problems a hundredfold than it is now. Especially in religious communities. But when you see her, you relate to her. You understand her and understand her pain and her joy in her motherhood. Bless be to you, because you understand her unconditional love. Does this answer your question, or is there something else? No, that, that answers my question, because uh, many, many times I, I could feel the pain that you went through by losing yeah. you. Yes, and you as a mother, you as a woman, you as a divine creature suffer the same. But now bring unconditional love to a place where it can help others. Because if you do not have it for yourself, you cannot show it to others. Now, when you're dealing with a group, I will, I, I will tell you this. Unconditional love for a group is difficult. Why? Because each one is in a different place in their life. Each one has a different percentage of commitment, of love, of blessing, of truth, 
and so you must love them unconditionally as a group. And if there is one that causes problems within the group, you must love the group unconditionally and let the problem move away in whatever way that that is possible. And there is a possibility that that one that disturbs the group can come back to the group. No problem. Having learned a small lesson from the unconditional love for the group, that person comes back to the group because the lesson is learned. The love is there and the truth of what is happening is there. You must be respectful, <coughs> must be understanding, must be love in unconditional love. If it is not of unconditional love, then it will offend. Offend. Does that make sense to you? Yes, yes, because um, I try and see everybody's perspective on things and, and try and weigh everything in while still respecting everybody's free will and everybody's choices and that's what sometimes makes it a bit difficult. Understood. But you understand the lesson so it is with great <coughs> concern and unconditional love that you move forward with this. Do you understand? Yes. And that you can ask for help with from higher spiritual beings. And you have. Yes, yeah. I finally just ended up posting my, the prayers. <laughs> and now it is the time for blessing and thanksgiving to those around you. Those around you are giving thanks for the things that they have received out of unconditional love and now are understanding where they fit in with their own unconditional let them be with joy and understanding. Yeah, yeah, because the, the, the problem was tearing me apart because I didn't want to see... Not let that happen because to tear you apart means that you are the problem. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Do not take on the problem as being within yourself. Take on the problem as it coming to a conclusion with your love in the way that you will have it come out of you and express itself in full unconditional ways. It's difficult to live in an unconditional love. It's difficult to live in unconditional love because it is unconditional. Yes. Uh, let me ask a clarification question. Does the unconditional love mean unconditional actions and unconditional doings? It depends on the situation. Unconditional actions are wonderful if what you're doing is out of unconditional love. Let me explain that. You can have children that you need to punish out of unconditional love because your love for them wants them to learn but if you are the example of the unconditional love your children will not be needing so much uh, what is the word discipline because they will be taking their example from you they will be taking their example from your unconditional love but if there is a time when you need to sit them down and speak to them or whatever the case may be, teach them a lesson, let them give, give them knowledge, make sure you give them the knowledge in a way that they are hearing it and bringing it into their life and bringing it into their purpose. Not only their life, but their purpose. Because unconditional love is part of your purpose on this planet. So when you deal with your children or people that are unloving or people that you feel that are not right, make sure that 
you let them know that it is part of their purpose to accept unconditional love, to be unconditional love. That is a difficult thing because not everyone will accept that. But yet you must still be the example. You still must be the example. Do you understand? Yes. You are not pushing what you believe on them. You are not pushing your, your spirituality on them. You are not pushing uh, that they are wrong, necessarily. You're telling what you feel in your heart, in, in your unconditional love. If that makes them feel wrong, that's something different. Do you understand? They may feel wrong. They may feel guilt. But what you are saying is out of love and out of purpose, and out of th to make things better. Does that under, is that? Yes, thank you. That is uh, in agreement with my understanding. Yes, well. thank you. very good. Um, yes, now it's, uh, I want to say hello, I'm Gabriel. Hello, Gabriel. Yes, I wonder if you have any short message for me, and then I have a question from Roy. I cannot hear you very well. He asks if I uh, have a question for him. Uh, are there uh, any message for him? And then he has a question from Ravi. Oh, very good. What I have to say to you is be aware. Be aware, Gabriel. Everything around you is moving in a different direction than you are. So you must sometimes get into that flow to understand third dimension. Do you understand that? Yes. And your peers look at you as you are not even there sometimes because they do not how to know how to speak to you. However, put yourself in a place where you can be spoken to. Do okay. not shy away. Yeah, be I, as normal as possible in your moment. You have something else to say? Thank you for that message. Yes, because you are of a fourth dimensional nature, born into third dimension, and have trouble grounding. That is fine. That is not a problem. That is not a sin or a, or a fault or anything. It is just what it is. But you must understand those people around you because you must eventually become a leader. And to shy away from involvement with others is yes. not necessarily a good thing for you. And even if you don't think you're good at it, guess what? You can become good at it. Your unconditional love for yourself will affect how you interact with others. Yes, Roy asked if... Um, his question is, uh, what did you do between <laughs> years 12 to 30? when you were on Earth? I did many, many things. I learned many things. I understood many things. I experienced many things. Let me tell you something. Between those ages, I was learning. You see, I was the, the God figure come to Earth in some ways. But I still had to be human. And so my humanity had to learn how to ground, just like you, Gabriel. I had to learn how to ground, I had to learn how to live, I had to learn how to communicate with the world around me and be part of it before I could ever start teaching any yes. lessons. Because those lessons were so important to the earth, although they've been skewed in many cases at this point that I see. However, at that time, in that place, in that world, in that third dimension, those messages must be told so that everyone could understand. And for me, I could not do that. I know that there are stories of me in the temple, speaking to the high priest, but that was different. I was speaking about spirit. I was not speaking about humanity. And I had to learn humanity. I had to learn about the body. 
I had to learn about the brain and the spirit and the heart. I had to learn all these things, and that's why you don't hear about me in those times. It was a learning period. I had to learn my humanity so that I could give my spirituality in a way that could be understood by humanity. Yeah. I, Does that make sense? I feel that some degree our stories are similar in the way I came in here on Earth, but it's a little bit different, but it's the same perspective in some senses. Why yes. Although I was somewhat of a prophet, yes, and people look at me as a savior, but beyond that, I am a spiritual a spirit just like you. I yes. return to spirit. And I return to spirit, just like every one of you. Just like every one of you. Yes, perhaps I had a divine special mission. Yes, but I returned to spirit, like you all. You are oh, all yeah. of spirit. You are all of God. You are all. I just had a special message. Yes, like everyone has a special message. And I have a different special message now than from back then. That message is now. Some of it is very true to this day, and some of it is obsolete. Because this is now, and that was that now. Do you understand? Yes. And so this message, this truth for this age may sound like blasphemy to the world because they were taught the things of that era. They were taught the truths of that era, and some of those truths are still here, and some of them are not. Yeah, I have been thinking about if someone from here get teleported to that time, we will become like you was at that time. In so. some ways. So you're not really different from anybody else in this room. I had a special mission. Yes. Who's next? Hello, uh, Jesus. This is Sean. Hi, Sean. Hi. Uh, I can't express in physical form the amount of love that I have for you and what my feelings are. I, uh, I like to thank you for your message. It has helped me so much through the past few years, and I just like to thank you. Many blessings to you, Sean. May I give you a blessing? There are many things about you that are very, very special. Your love, your loyalty, and your faithfulness are undying. That is a beauty beyond words, and love that comes from you is close to unconditional as I've seen in many years. Bless you, my child. Who is next? Um, I, I'm teaching on my webinars, on our webinars, that you are an energy which is responsible for ascension, not only of humans, but many other races. Is it right? I've had special missions other places, yes. But not every place that ascends is with my help. I do not go to every planet. I do not go to every galaxy to do this kind of work. I have different things that I do in different places. but. In this world, yes, I am a key to ascension in some ways. The idea of a Jesus atmosphere or a Jesus soul or a Jesus love brings me joy because I know that, that what they mean by it. I know what they mean by it. I know that it brings people up. I know that it causes people to change. And that to me is a joy. Do you understand? Yes. yes. Thank you. Another thing which I also wanted to verify, uh, Robert Shapiro channeled you where and your students, disciples, saying that you have incarnated many more times on Earth, like hundreds of times. I don't know about hundreds, but many more times is accurate. I come to do special things at special times, to give a voice where a voice is needed, to give 
a hope where there is none, to bring light where there is only darkness. And so, yes, in that sense, I have been here many times and have incarnated for the purpose of bringing light to a, an area that is only dark or seems only dark. I will unite with the inner souls of those people. Every human being is born of light, spirit wrapped in flesh, spirit wrapped in flesh. And so sometimes that gets hidden and buried. And you can't see it in some areas. And I come to bring that light out of them so that that area can shine again. But I do not come as a prophet. I do not come as a savior. I do not come that way. I come as a human with that in mind. That's exciting. So is it... Would it be true to say that at that moment as we speak, you are walking on earth in many places. At this moment, you mean? Yes. I'm here with you. All right. So tomorrow we might appear somewhere else on Earth, physically. I do not appear physically on Earth, no. No. But I am with Earth all the time, in some way or another. Thank you. My next personal qu question is personal, but I think it might be important for many others. So. I have this dilemma, which is a big dilemma for me, big yes. duality for me. When I move to four dimension, so I, I'm at peace with higher dimensions, seventh and higher and spirits, I really appreciate the spiritual part. But when I move to the fourth dimension, I lose the third. I, my third dimension life becomes a disaster, especially financial disaster. And when I move to third, the fourth dimensional reality becomes unreal, it just unreal. It From the third dimensional perspective, it is not true. Right. It is unreal, not real, not real. And it bothers me. In fourth dimension, there is no financial problems. And so there where you come, when you enter the fourth dimension, you take on the properties of the fourth dimension. When you come back to third dimension, those properties are not there. So therefore, finances in the fourth dimension are far, far, far different than what they are in the third dimension. So of course you bring the idea of the fourth dimensional finances to your third dimensional. It's a disaster because they're not even applicable to one another. Do you understand? Yes. They don't apply. But when you look at fourth, third dimensional finances here, you don't understand them and they don't understand you. And when you, do, when you have a conflict with understanding, you must understand everything about what you're trying to get. So understand your money and how it happens and where it comes from. Not just work. Not just work. Not just donations. Not just one thing or another about finances. Finances come in millions of different ways. Understand that there is not just one way to build your finances. If you look only one way to build your finances, you are dependent on that to make a living. You are depending on that one thing, that one idea, to bring you your life into fullness. And you cannot depend on just that one idea, especially if it's not been successful. You have to find your other ideas. Find the other ways that money can be brought into your life because if it's not happening one, that one way, what do they say? If I do everything the same every time, you will get the same results. Not, not quite true always. Not quite true always. Because sometimes if you're looking for a job and you the, many of them fail, sometimes there will be one. But if you go for years looking for a job and none appear, then you need to find a different route or a different way to look. A different avenue of understanding about your financial situation, your highest resonation, that is important too, to bring your finances to you. Because Believe it or not, you can bring your finances to you. You can do that. You can do that. 
because you have to understand how to do it though. And right now, if you try one way all the time, or maybe just two ways all the time and they're not working, try something else, a third way, a fourth way, a fifth way. Do you understand? Yes, wonderful, thank you. Uh, you didn't answer the problem about the reality of fourth dimension because from here, when in third dimension I look at it, it just doesn't, the messages just conflict one another. Exactly. This is what happens. If you're not totally grounded when you enter fourth dimension, you cannot bring the information back to third dimension. Do you understand? Because the energy, the information in fourth dimension is drawn up through into the fourth dimension so that you can understand third dimension and then finally understand fourth dimension when you reach it. You must be in fourth dimension, connected to the third dimension for it to speak to you in the way that makes sense. Does that make sense to you? Yes. And when you bring that information back to the third dimension, which you are grounded in, hopefully, then you will be able to tell you, you, and you what is in the third dimension that you learned. But if you are not connected to the third dimension and grounded through and up to, then you come down into a cloud. And the cloud is what? Wispy. People don't understand what you're talking about. This fourth dimensional, it doesn't seem real. This fourth dimension, it doesn't seem like it has any relativity to third dimension, but it does. But to understand that and to bring it back into understanding from fourth dimension to third dimension, you have to be grounded. And you must make sure that you are grounded in a way that helps you to understand. You even admitted sometimes third dimension makes no sense to you. That's not being grounded. Because third dimension makes sense. It just doesn't make sense when you look at the fourth dimension and third dimension together. But if you ground yourself, move up, touch the fourth dimension, walk in it, live in it for a moment, and then you will see how it is the next step. How it is the next density. How it is the next understanding. Because the Third dimensional understanding is just that, a third dimensional understanding. We, you understand the things of the third dimension. And, and many of the great rulers of here have the most understanding of the third dimension. And, and maybe not even understanding of the fourth dimension or whatsoever. But they were born into the third dimension. And they, they made it their goal to know the third dimension, and they prosper here. You understand that? Can I ask a question? Yes. What is the third dimension? This third density is this. Right now? The now, the right now, the density that you cannot put your finger through your hand, you cannot put your hand through a window without smashing it. It's a density. Mm -hmm. And exactly that. It's 3D, three dimension. Fourth dimension is not the same. It is a different density. And different properties are allowed there than are allowed here. Here you cannot have the same properties. But to reach the fourth dimension, you can understand the properties and bring that understanding back here so that you can explain them to people of third dimension. Do you understand? Yes. yes. Is there any questions out there? Yes, Hayan had a question. Continue. Yes, hello, much love. Much love. Blessings, my brother. Yes, blessings. Do you have any message for me? I think that you're... Right now, your interest in your physicality is interesting. But do you understand what I mean by that? Mm, my body? Yes. Yeah. Very good. What you're teaching in the world is very interesting and very third dimensional. 
The people that you deal with have higher dimensional thoughts but cannot bring them into a third dimension whatsoever and cannot relate to third dimension whatsoever at times. And sometimes that's 99% of the time. But there is that 1% 1 of the time or 2% of the time where they reach into the third dimension and get a glimpse of it. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Yes. Then what I want you to do is ask questions to them. Because I want you to be even... You actually get along well with them, don't you? You actually have a mindset where you can reach into them and understand things about them that no one else can. Isn't that true? Yes. There is something that will help you to do this even more. And that is, when, when they are in that very moment of third dimension, ask them who they are. Mm. Ask them who they are. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. This will help them ground themselves because even in fourth dimension or fifth dimension you are still someone you are still something you are still important you have value let them know that you understand their value in a greater way you already do this I'm just reinforcing you do you understand what I'm saying yeah I'm yeah. reinforcing you to be as excited now as you've ever been because your excitement will help awaken third dimensional thoughts in some of these fourth dimensional people actually some of them are fifth dimensional but you are a gateway you as an individual of love and understanding are a gateway to their success. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. You have great love for them, but it has, sometimes it gets to be like, oh, what a burden, right? Yeah. Just lift it, because they are loving you unconditionally, whether you know it or not. Their unconditional love is actually fairly pure. Fairly mm. pure. You understand that? Yeah, yeah. Their dependence on you is remarkable. Wow. You are a great man to be able to see into the souls of those in different dimensions. <coughs> but you can do that. And you have done it. And you have helped them with their lives become more happy more joyful and more connected. Am I right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I know. And when you said to ask a question who who they are, when I get the glimpse of them being grounded. Yes. Is it um, you know just communicating and and making a connection? It is. What, and feeling what they are feeling. Yes, I am. It tells them that you're interested in who they are. Who are you? I am interested in who you are. Does that make how, sense to you? And how do you feel? And how do you feel? And any question that connects to them on a personal level. But the first thing is, who are you? Tell me who you are. And they can just give you a look and tell you because you will understand them. Mm. Yeah, I will understand the look. Yeah. Because you ask that question, that connects you to them in a greater way than you will ever know because you're interested in them as a person whereas the rest of the world is not. Yeah. Do you understand? Yes. Many, blessing, many, many blessings to you. Your work is great. And I see that you, that you are a great person for this job, for this kind of work. Thank you. This was very empowering. Could some of those beings be, be the one that I work with that is uh, mentally disabled? Yes. Yes. 
But are they? Some of them are not really as mentally disabled as they are crippled by third dimension. Yeah, yeah. I understand. Yes. Um, what is a prophet? A prophet is one that brings new information to a world that needs it, enlightens them. Okay. But does not give individual futures necessarily, but gives futures of a, nat a nation or a generation, which is harder to come about. Do you understand? One, not one person can bring about the change in a generation unless they're a very powerful leader. But when you talk about the next generation and there is no leader yet, and the prophet knows the, the information about the next generation already, that is a prophet. Mm. So I'll, and it's for spiritual uplifting as well. Yeah. Just like we are saying now, the ascension has begun. Connected to I am telling you about the, the source. We are telling you about the future generation, are we not? The spirits are telling you about the future generation. About there is no one leader right now. There is no one person that is grabbing hold of the ascension and pushing it into the future. No, or guiding it. But no. The prophet is saying that it is, this is what is happening. And then your leaders will come, and your leaders will lead, and many things will happen for it to become what it is. And if those people believe the message, their spirits will be given a great boost in many ways. It may not all come at once, and it may not be... Some of you out there are saying, I believe, but I don't feel any great boost. Not yet. Not yet. But your boost will come as you continue to push forward in your spirit, to love those around you, become part of the community, and connect. Yes. yes. Um, okay, I will pass the mic. Namaste. Then continue. The next, yeah, the next question was from Al, and he also wanted to know if you had any messages for him. Move, keep moving forward. You're doing great work. You have a soul and a spirit of great love and inclusion. You're an inclusive person. You find the good in everyone. I like that. That's my message for you. Yeah, thank you. He even finds the good in those that mistreat him. Yes. Yes, you do. Thank you. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Hello, Jesus. Hi. This is Zinaida. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. Wonderful. Uh, from my childhood, I always feel connection to you. As yes. I put you in my heart, I felt always the pain, and I felt like I was physically next to you in your previous life. There are times, yes. Yes. Who you have lived I? lives with me before, yes. Can you tell me who was I? I cannot tell you right now. But you were someone close to Jesus at that time. Well, I will tell you. You were the mother of John. Ah, beautiful. And you knew that, I think. I felt that. Yes. You were the mother of John, who was very loving and very concerned about all the disciples at one time, because you felt that they were following maybe someone that would, was going to be a madman in the future, and 
it turned out that his love even changed you. Yes. Yes, I understand. You were the great mother of John. I have one more question about yes. your personal life. Is that yes. true that you had a daughter with Magdalene? Well, yes, that is true. And I'll tell you why. To understand humanity, I had to become purely human. And to have a daughter is the understanding of family. And I also had a son. Because I had to understand family as a unit, but we were never united in marriage, and that was by divine providence. We did have a relationship of great love and passion. That is for me to understand, only to understand how to help humanity in a greater way. Not sin. It was not sin. It was divine learning. Do you understand? It was not something that I did to be sinful, not something that I desired to cause people to think that I was a sinner, but only to understand the ways of humanity so that I could help even in a greater way, to be a greater leader, <laughs> to understand all the problems that Earth has. And so I experienced many things, not because I thought it was sinful, but I thought it was necessary, necessary to understand humanity, because without doing it, how could I possibly understand? Do, you, do any of you realize how meaningful that is? For I, it was actually a sacrifice of divinity. And when I sacrificed my life, I sacrificed all those experiences along with me. Do you understand that? Yes. Yes. And I put them in perspective. Put them in perspective of how they should be with teachings in the earthly realm. They were there to teach. I could understand. I could give compassion. I could give love and understanding since I knew about it. Now I don't know, didn't know every single thing, but I learned many, many things through many, many experiences. And now I wanted to help. It took a while for me to become a teacher. I was not always a great speaker, just like Moses. Just like Abraham. Not all of them were good speakers, but they were chosen. And they learned, and they got found ways to get the message across. Do you understand that? Yes. Moses eventually became a good speaker, but not at first. Jesus, do you have any messages for me? My child, your unconditional love is showing. You reach out, you feel connected. There are those that you help. There's a there's something you're going through right now, but you are more of a help than anything. Do you understand what I mean? Yes. You are helping. And that is the beauty of your life, is that you know how to change your experiences into a helpful, and other people learn from it. And they see your love, gratitude, and understanding, and are drawn to you, in that way. But even in a suffering situation, you turn it into a helpfulness. Bless you. Bless you. I love you very much. 
I love you as well. Bless you, my daughter. Thank you. I love you. Um, I wanted to ask, we want to connect to you personally between the sessions, between your visits. Would the cross be an appropriate symbol to symbolize you? How would we connect to you? What is the best way? You can use the cross, but that is a symbol of pain and suffering, but it is also a, a symbol of victory for some people. Use those symbols that mean the most to you for joy. Do you understand? For joy. Because to connect to me is to connect joyfully. If you use the cross, it's a little more difficult, but it can be done. I'm still joyful throughout the whole. I would suggest you use just my name and use just the thought of something that I did to help someone else. Well, yes. Did you want to speak? Is there something that you need to tell me? You are about to meet someone soon. They will turn out to be a wonderful person for you. Thank you. you already know about them, but you've never met them in person. But you know their heart already. You know their heart. You know their heart. And this will be a good bond for you. And it will cause you to cry with joy. Because that is what you're looking for right now in your life. You want to share and give all that you can give to the world. And he will help you do that. Do you understand? Your healing will become stronger, your compassion greater, your love of the world complete. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes. Um, I was wondering if you had um, any, um, like, healing for me? Healing will come for you, yes. And it can come even faster. Bring You have been changing. You have gone through many changes recently. And you have found many truths about yourself that you had not realized. Once you have come to that perfect realization of who you are, many things will be healed because you do not need them. They are caused from the emotion and they will be healed by the emotion. Do you understand? Yes. You will be able to let them go finally and they will be gone, as well as the pain, as well as the suffering, the worry of that condition will not be there. But there will be a little time yet. There is a lesson to be learned in the meantime. But I see it. Thank you. Is there any more? The information about Gnostics came to me in several ways that you learned from Gnostics in your lifetime. As of course. Jesus of Nazareth? Yes. Can you tell about them? The Gnostics, um, they, were, they were very pragmatic, very practical. They believed in, if, it is, if they can't see it, they didn't believe in it. If, they didn't, if it wasn't there to touch, they couldn't feel it. So if you were telling them a story about the past and the legends of the past, they could not understand it in the way unless they experienced something similar. Because they were not people of great vision. They were a people of great knowledge. Do you understand? So their knowledge was important to me. 
and with them I understood how to tell them where they could find a vision. And their visions became intellectual and they became their reality. Does that make sense to you? Their reality was manifest. <laughs> and they were much happier when they manifested their intellect. You would say, well, if their intellect isn't manifest, then it would be a vision, right? No, necessarily. Not necessarily. Their intellect was just that. If it was there, they could understand it, they could study it, they could do things with it, they could make it work or make it not work, but their reality was that they were not creating new things, they were just understanding everything. But with their the understanding of vision, they began to create. And they began with artistic creation, linear creation, mm -hmm. and then it became three-dimensional creation. Do you understand? If you go back to the Gnostics and look at their things, there is much artwork. It was the beginning of their fulfillment, beginning of their fulfillment as a race of people, as an understanding people. They did have feelings and emotions and things of that nature, but they weren't looked at as such a, so important at times as knowing things. Knowing things. Does that answer your question? Yes. Uh, did you travel to Tibet uh, during the life of Jesus of Nazareth and learn Buddhism there? I did go to Tibet short, for a short while at the age of 30 or just before 30. Before my ministry started I wanted to see that that thought pattern as well because I understood it and I understood color and spirituality and sound and vibration and it was the final thing that I had to do before teaching. So yes. It's exciting. It confirms many. Uh, you know, one Russian artist went to Tibet to look for your traces and uh, there were traces but nothing tangible. So hearing from you that it was confirmed is, is very exciting. I had to go many places to learn what I had to teach. I had to learn many things. I had to learn about humanity. I had to learn about my own humanity. And I had to learn about women and men and how they are together separately in every way Bef before I could actually honestly bring them into a spiritual understanding. Did you go to England? And if you did, did you go physically or you just transported there? I was never in England. Uh -huh. But I knew about it from those that I met <clears throat> from there. So it was something to be understood. The Druids were interesting, of the, the Druids of the past. And I was interested in studying them as well. And that was from that English perspective. Yes, and I did have teachers that knew about them and understandings of how their lives were and their, their mysticism and things of that nature. I have one more question. Um, yes. How do we, um, you know there are many Christian churches Yes. and I have many family members there are in them. Um, they think that I am not with God because I am not in a church. What is the best way to speak to them about this? Well, you see, they were taught in a certain way. The church has changed over the last 2,000 years. It's become a business in some ways. And the spirit of love is not always the major thing that is 
that is being taught. They're teaching about society. They're teaching about uh, things from the Old Testament that are no longer valuable to this lifetime. The thing that is most important is to let them know that this is a different day and age. And the truth, the now truth, is different than it was then. Spirit is becoming a greater force in mankind than he ever was before. He is showing miracles in, in the mind, in the spirit, in the soul. The miracle of connection by community is incredible. There's never been an era where connection is easier or more difficult. Do you understand that? Through spirit, through purity of the spirit, through unconditional love, your connections can become very, very much stronger than they ever have been in this realm before. Now, to speak to someone from the Christian church is difficult. Let me tell you why. They are being brought up on the principles of another era. The principles that were believed in a thousand, two thousand years ago. And that is fine. There is still some truth in that. But the church has made it a manipulation to keep the people in their church, to get their money, to, to build as an organization. But what did they do? Look at the hierarchy of the church. Is it, is it dressed in humble clothing? Is it dressed humbly to feed the poor? Is it dressed humbly to go out and say, I am like you, I am your peer, I'm, I am just like you in love and understanding? No! They put on robes and finery to make themselves better than anyone else. We look up to them. We look just like the Pharisees. You have to understand, if you are different in any way than the people that you are trying to teach, that is putting yourself above them in some way. And they may not look at it that way. But how do you look at it? But that's not the answer to your question. The answer to your question is this. You must speak and tell them that you are full of spirit. You believe in God. You believe in higher things. You believe in miracles. You believe in Jesus. And say, I am not so different than you if you could just see me. Yes. Because I... I, I uh... I studied the Bible for a very long time, um, and I had actually had many discussions with many of them. Um, and at this point, I, I think if it helps them, I think then it's an important thing for them. Yes. Um, but the thing is, them see me as an outsider of sorts. Yes, you see, you're free in the spirit, and they're in a machine that they call spirit. It's like being in, going to a machine every Sunday. It spits out the same words in many cases. It's all put in nice, organized manner. The spirit is organized, but not so finite. Not so small. Not so tiny. Not so one-sided. It is everywhere and everything and filled with love excitement movement greatness do not make it something small like the church the church is too small it needs to be great if it it needs to embrace the powers of all the truths that there is and they do not do that <laughs> they choose their truths and they teach them Yes. They choose their manipulations and they give them. They choose why you should give your money and you give it. You are just being told what to do. Are you being fed spiritually? Perhaps a little. There are some truths that are, that are undying from that period. Yes, there are some things. But yet, 
what about now? What about this era? What about the truths of inclusion that they do not have? The truths of acceptance that they do not have? The truths of unconditional love which they do not have because not everyone is welcome. Everyone needs to be welcome no matter who they are, no matter what they're wearing, no matter what they're wearing. Even if they're barefoot or naked, they should be able to come to the church. But that is not the case. But where you are, Sabrina, where many of you are, is there's freedom in the spirit. It is not judgmental. It is not pushy. It is not telling you how wrong you are or making you feel guilty about who you are or how you live your life because we're each perfect in our own way. But the Spirit is giving you freedom to be greater than just a third dimensional human. Do you understand that? Yes. This is the time for being greater than you are in the sense that love is greater than you are. Love is greater than you are. It is greater than the church because the church is a building with people. You will say, no, the church is the people. Yes, but they're inside a building and they are worshiping something smaller than they should be. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Stephen, it's next. Hello? Stephen, it's next. Uh, Noah? Hello. Uh, Kim, can you connection, please? Who is this? This is Noah. Oh. Hello. Hello, Jesus. It was good uh, to have you through, and I've never been connected to you before, and I'm so happy to have you through. I understand. Thank you. But you, um, to, but you are very connected to spirit, so you are connected to me, but not yeah, just as a, a personality. Exactly. I haven't spoke to you in person. That's why. Yes. Uh, my question is uh, regarding my uh, any questions for me regarding my development and ascension. How can I help and how can I evolve more? You've overcome some things recently, haven't you? Um, but you're still going. What? You've overcome something recently. Um, my what? I think a, a something uh, mentally in your uh, in the way that you live that you've come overcome some mental struggles that were going on with you but right now you're in a, really, a good place so mm -hmm. do you understand what I'm talking about I'm taking it everything gradually and I'm for forgiving everything that happened to me in the past yes and that's what I'm much talking better about. yeah that's the that was a struggle to get over that exactly yeah I suffered from it long time yes but it feels so recent to me because sometimes you glimpse at it again Yes, true, true. And, um, so but what I have to say to you is this. Your movement forward is remarkable. You have learned to forgive the past and move forward in your individual life in a way that is so pure. Do you understand what I mean? You have really no harsh connections to the past at this time. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. You yeah, are very, is, very loving. I am, I am impressed with this community, how you have moved so quickly to a place where things are more understandable. There's a long way to go. I'm not saying you're there yet. I'm just saying that it's a remarkable movement in spirit and understanding and love. There, it, it, it's very, quite beautiful. Could you help me in the ascension, please? I need your help. Yes. Development and all this enhancement. You have learned many lessons and you're still assimilating some of them. And the help is on its way, yes. All right. That's not that. The question is about yourself. Have you incarnated? Yes, I've incarnated several times. Any existing uh, personality? <laughs> only th the only one that you would know would be this one. However, I've come back in many ways to help many people. Thank you very much. Well, I appreciate it and love you so much. 
I love you so much, and thank you for the way that you are moving. Your your mind is expanding with love. It's wonderful. Bless you all. Thank you very much, and all the crew over here. You're welcome. Mm. I have a question. Too. Yes. Um, I have a desire to go for mastery, to, to follow in your footsteps. Yes. That's been within me for a long time. Mm -hmm. and, um, you have that full unconditional love, and they have the healing capacities. Yes. How far am I from that, and what can I do to get closer? You are already there. You have the mastery of many, many things. The, the mindset of a master, but what you don't have is the platform to spring out on. And that will be coming in another way. Since there are things about you that others can see, they now need to see your leadership. And they do not see that yet. They see you as mild and meek. Mm -hmm. And when they find that you can speak and tell things that are beyond what they can understand, then you will start to gain a notoriety for teaching that you did not have before. Mm -hmm. We can help you with that. I'd love to help. Thank you. So you're, but what you have now is much information, much healing ability, which will get stronger, and much people around you that know who you are and what you can do. Now we must bring that together in a different way. Okay. Stephen is next. Hello, Jesus. Yes. How are you? Good. I'm great. Thank you. I hear your child in the background. <laughs> yes, yes, actually my sister is a newborn. Ah, uh, Stephen, you are from Texas. Yes, sir. Yes. Texas. <laughs> yes. Um, what was, is your question? Uh, yes, thank you. Um, I was going to ask you uh, about one of my past lives uh, when I was a, a high priest or a priest in the Babylonian times. Yes. Um, yes. I was just trying to get some more information about that, if I could. I see. What do you know so far? I don't want to repeat things, but I know that you were a priest and that you were quite powerful, actually. Um, you spoke to your people with a great deal of authority. You were, a not, you were not a Jewish priest. You were not... You were um, actually a hedonistic priest. Yes, and you spoke to your people quite clearly that um, you, you had a great understanding of spirit and a great understanding of uh, what humanity should become as a community. And that is where your thoughts were very strong in the community because, you, as you know, hedonistic worship was very sometimes sexual and sometimes very communal. But you saw it more as communication and unity rather than it was sin and pleasure. You saw it as unity with one with another to bring a thought of unity together with them. As a priest, you were not so involved in the thoughts of pleasure although you enjoyed it. Your thoughts were more in the, the space of connection and bringing together and causing unity. And you could speak to your people in a way that those pleasures did bring them unity. Thank you. Um, is there a name that I could get what my name was back then? I do not remember your name. I remember who you were, but I do not remember your name. Your face is the same. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, do you have any current messages for me on my ascension and uh, and uh, and that dream and stuff? Uh, I mean, uh, they told me to refer to Kerr about it. But I just wonder if you had any uh, messages. I, could you say that again? I did not hear you. Um, I just wonder if you uh, had any uh, current messages for me about my ascension, uh, uh, and uh, I also had a dream. Uh, a dream about the ascension? Uh, well, it was about the uh, the reptilian babies, about the kids that I went to visit, and uh, I was talking to the captain of uh, of the colony ships, uh, and uh, he told me uh, he couldn't tell me he had to refer to the cur. And uh, it was about when I met them and, and met this this reptilian baby and held it and and I couldn't get much information about it and just oh the reptilian baby was not a hybrid it was actually a reptilian child born of two reptilian parents and the and it was actually you enjoyed holding it you found it quite interesting and it gave you a lot of joy. Um, you may not recall all of that at this time, but yes, you were quite enthralled with the child, and you actually thought it was cute. So, um, but the idea behind that was that the parents of the child were um, getting to know you better, and you asked to hold the baby, and that was something that you enjoyed very much. Since there are babies around you, you do know how to treat them, handle them and make them happy so yes and there is word on your ascension you are doing very well indeed you're not working right now are you oh yes you are I see it's just not the job that resonates the highest with you but ah, uh, you need more security there is your problem with your ascension, your security. You do not feel secure within yourself in some ways. Bring out your, bring out that security and look at, that insecurity and look at it. Because where does that stem from? Does it stem from mother, father, family? Or does it stem from peers? Or does it stem from your job? situation you must identify where that security problem comes from and and rectify it but your unconditional love is getting greater and your ascension is definitely positive okay thank you and what's one of the parents uh, uh, I was remember I remember talking with one I man I do remember holding them and seeing them and I was very uh, joyful I, I do remember yes awesome is he he's so detailed and everything. I think you bit me too on the right hand, on the finger. Yes. That's the right. You didn't. It didn't bother you. It wasn't a, a hard bite. Yeah, it was, it was awesome. Uh, but I, I remember talking. He and uh, before I actually met the, the child, and uh, he said that I should blow in its face and woof. Was that one of the parents? That is. That is a sign that you are familiar with that reptilian child, and so that you mean him no harm because they blow on their children to let them know that they're to give them it actually causes the child to be at peace what it does is lower their uh, temperature when they're crying or when they're in their um, they're agitated or whether they're they they're originally were cold-blooded but they were becoming more mammalian and they're whenever they're Whenever they cry or get excited or frustrated, their face gets warm. And blowing on the face is a sign that you're trying to calm them down and cool them off and get them. The, the, that's a sign of familiarity. It's often used by many reptilian parents to calm their child because their face gets warm. Do you understand? And the and when you go woof, uh, it it's also um, a sign of familiarity which makes the child feel comfortable because when they're being born that is what the parents are saying when they're being born it's traditional to be saying woof 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 at the birth of a reptilian child it means come forth come forth come forth so um, when you're telling the child to come forth and you're breathing on it and it, it's it's calming the child down because that's a memory of beginning. 
All right, thank you. And one more quick question. I'll pass the mic. Do I have a connection with them, with the yeah, parents, sure. with uh, my uh, my Jelinians, my Alpha Centurion side, or my Nubian side, or my Adarian side? Or Darian side. Yes, okay. you definitely have a connection with them. On your Adarian side, yes. All right, thank you. I'll pass the mic. Thank you so much, Jesus. Namaste. Hi, Welcome. Jesus. I have a question from the group. May I ask? Sure. Her name is Kim. She's from Australia. Yes. And she's asking you if you have any messages for her, please. She is. <laughs> what a wonderful person she is. Yes. Um, there are many people around her that depend on her for emotional reinforcement. And right now she is coming into a relationship of, of great meaning. But there are those in, from her past that also need her emotional support still. And I just want to let her know, do not, don't, do not let the present relationships destroy the past ones because it is important that they exist and that it's important that they are strong. Do you understand? Does she understand? There is no direct connection. Oh. I see. But I think she understands. Yes, she does. Yes, of yes. course. Thank and you. I wanted to tell her that her new endeavor in, will be quite spiritual as well. There will be many facets to this relationship that were never in any other relationship before. Wonderful. Uh, Thank you very much, Jesus. There is a question which I was, uh, someone asked, Terry asked me to, to, to ask during the webinar. So Terry, I think, lives in Australia also. Maybe it's the same person, I don't know. So she asks, uh, uh, when I was a young child, approximately three, my mom would uh, hear angelic singing coming from my room at night. I have some memories, though. I wish I know what beings these are uh, and any information related to why this occurred. They were angels and the reason for them was for protection. There was a time when you were very young that you needed protection from uh, negative forces and your mother knew this as well. There was something negative happening in, in your world, in that world, in that realm where you were living and she sent them, actually. She sent angels to you all the time to help you so that you would not be part of this negativity, and it did work. Wonderful. Uh, I wanted to give you, to connect to you in some unusual way, and I thought, what present I can give you? And I just thought that one of the presents I can give you a joke, which you might not be familiar with. Directly, so there is one joke about you, and it's a very enlightening joke. It's uh, a joke. Okay. Balance the borders between religions. So here it is. It's very short, and it's hard to understand, but it is enlightening and intellectual. So, a Jew comes yes. to Rabbi and complains. He says, "Rabbi, I have a problem. My son converted to Christianity." And Rabbi says, "Don't worry, my friend." You're not alone. Oh, God has the same problem. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. I'm Jewish. I was Jewish. I am not a Christian, by the way. I'm a. I'm a Jewish man. I was a Jewish man. Ah, uh, and now you are Christians, if you are or not. But that is not a title that you need to have. That is not a title that you need to have. You should be of the spirit. Of the spirit. You should be of the spirit because that is who you are. You are of the spirit. Of the spirit. I'm going to go shortly. All right. There are two things that you choose what you answer and what you're not. So uh, one thing... Um, People ask that you give us a blessing before you leave. Yes. Second thing is, uh, two people ask 
if there are disciples, your disciples, apostles, uh, incarnated right now on earth, and if any are within this community. And, and a third thing, and you choose what you answer, is, is it an error not to be focused on ascension, personal ascension? Is it an error in judgment to focus on life and not to be worried about ascension? Well, there's many questions there and all kinds of answers. But right now, Thomas and James are both incarnated on the Earth, and Judas is incarnated on another planet. And uh, that's all I know at this time. But to be aware of the uh, ascension is to be part of it. To actually be working on ascension is really difficult because what is what is it? It's raising your vibration, becoming part of the community, doing. There's many things that are are ascending. But what I would tell you is to be part of the community and ascend together. Do not, do not assume that you are ascending slower or faster than someone else. Do not put yourself in a judgmental position about yourself and ascension, but just go with it. Move with it. Love with it. Share with it. Combine with it. Do not measure it, okay? Mm -hmm. The measuring of it is insignificant. How could you measure it precisely anyway? But I can tell you this, some communities and some people are closer knit than others, and they rise faster when they become more loving to one another and accept one another. Acceptance and inclusion and even if there's someone that you're not quite sure of their agenda, you have to accept them because you were born to accept them. You were born into unconditional love. You were born to be with everyone of the spirit. Your spirits, our spirits, all connected. All connected. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Does that answer your question? Yes. But I will go now, but I will leave you with a blessing. I will leave you with a blessing. Most High Spirit Light, that one creator of all things that broke off into many things, hold us in your understanding, your love, your power, and your healing ways. You are all things to all people at all times, in every place. We understand that you want to guide us forward. We understand that you are understanding, giving, loving, full of the things that we need in ourselves. So take us Fill us. Let us understand and be wise when we move forward. Let us know if ascension is happening. Let us know when ascension is not happening. But it moves forward. Move it forward in yourself. You don't have to measure it. You just let it happen. And feel the joy of connection with the world in a wonderful spiritual way and in every way. Do not give yourself boundaries, especially if there are boundaries that will hold you away from greater things, greater understandings, greater belief systems. Let yourself go and you will find that your unconditional love will guide you out. Will move out. Because that's where it's supposed to go. It's not to just stay in for you. It is to move out and love the world in any way you can. Bless you all. 
for your beautiful intentions, for your beautiful forgiveness, your beautiful understanding of each other, even when you don't understand, and you're giving yourselves the ability to still say I love you at all times. I may not agree, but I love you. I may not agree, but I love you. May all these blessings be with you constantly and forever. And may you always call on me if you need help. Because I'm here to help. I'm here to love. I'm a caregiver. I'm compassionate. I'm a healer just like all of you. Many blessings and much love. Amen. 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 Thank you. Much love. Thank you, Jesus. I will go now. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Much love. Much love. Hakuna Matata. <laughs> hey, Jamie. Hey. I have one right here. I went and got it. Okay. Oh, good. Yeah, I brought some cookies. Wow. The tapper. It's like check wet macadamia not. Hello, everybody. I'm back. That was a long session. Oh, Hello, to share the the stuff. Oh, one more Mmm. <clears throat> yes, yummy. Steven? Thank you, Jim. Is Steven around? No. I miss you. I think he has left, right? Yeah, he left. All right, so anyway, message for Steven for in the recording. So basically what uh, the advice to blow and to, how do they say, to, to woof, is um, is working for human babies as well. Um, so how do you blow? So when the baby cries, in most cases, he cries uh, because the blood blood is not flowing well and because there is not enough oxygen, especially to the brain. So you blow very gently, right in the nose, like very gently, and it gives them more oxygen to to just to get it to the brain. And then you give them the vibration, which is ooh, 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 ooh. That's what 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 uh, parents do, and you, you have can have a lot of can have a lot of practice right away with your newborn. Um, um, how do you say cousin? Cousin, yeah. So that's that works for human babies perfectly, and also I think it would work for any living, breathing beings. That's right, Max. I just did in the morning to my daughter. She had pain on her heart, but. I was speaking Liren and doing that. I didn't know that works. Yeah, we, we can go true. around on the street and blow people in the nose. <laughs> mm. All right. Are, All right. We, are we closing? I think it's time to close. Actually, we have to close. Uh, I guess uh, I will start Sabrina and Roxy join us with an, um, and Jim will translate if you don't. Um, uh, I'm feeling very mellow. <laughs> yeah, very nice. Um, <laughs> thank you everybody for being part of this co-creation. Let me think about, yeah, Chicago is on my mind, so I will start with Chicago. You know, Chicago is sort of, was the, one of the most bright cities in the world, most bold cities in the world. Mm -hmm. It's kind of maybe it's not in the front of the news right now, but it was, and it's still very much energetic. And if you just look at the map, it's it's terribly segregated. It's terribly seg segregated. It's like whites here, blacks here, Chinese here, and you know you're not good if you just cross the border and just walk at night in the wrong place. I just uh, it's still. I mean, the world, it's kind of, it's maybe still 19th century or maybe early 20th century. It's segregation and la lack of acceptance. And I guess we just come in a new age when I just happened to listen to Albright. Yeah, Albright. Uh, 
she was speaking uh, yesterday right in Chicago, so I was listening to that. She said, nationality is, what, it's like more like, nationalism is more like a, just a way for, um, I guess, the rulers to to blame all the problems on neighbors. That, that's what she said, at least in the essence. So there is a lot of good things which we want to keep, but we, do, we want to blend and blend the, blend the borders between each other. We want to unite. We want to unite. We want to integrate. And we want to forgive and integrate and understand each other beyond the border. And actually, education is one of the key issues there. People, especially black people, especially poor people, they still have real trouble getting education and get, getting the jobs. And uh, I mean, it's 20th century problem, but it's still here, there. And uh, just simple thing, how you go on internet and learn there. And uh, I don't know, just know, somehow it merges all together. You know, Internet Explorer, Internet Explorer is a browser. and it's just designed for you to be afraid to go to different new sites because if you use Internet Explorer, you get hacked. Don't use Internet Explorer. Use Chrome and use Firefox, and also use all sorts of antivirus things. Get educated, and then you can go and explore and learn. So, same thing in uh, uh, in Chicago, and same thing in life. You just protect yourself, educate yourself, and go and learn. Now there is a lot of ways to do that. So I guess my message is, let's uh, cross these borders. Let's help, help others to cross these borders. Very unusual blessing for today, but <laughs> but that's that's I guess my state of mind today. It's let's an educate question. and and cross the borders and blend and help others to blend. Okay. I would like to do some actorian okay. blessing. Okay, if you can translate him. Torra sa kato kuruota sa raka ta kero kusuru kuto te kera te kisuru kuto tu tu kura ata sa raka ta kato kuto tu tu kuru sa ke te kera to kusuru kuto tu tu kura ta kera sa raka te kuto tu tu ata sa raka ye te kero kuto tu ta sa raka te kero kuto tu tu ta kera sa raka kuto tu tu kuru ba. Do you get anything? The spirit of love is moving. The spirit of love moved upon us and educated us in the way of love. And now let the love integrate everything. Just like spirit, love is everywhere. Just like spirit, love is everywhere. And you can find it in everything. Very nice. Sabrina Roxy and everybody. Yeah, I, I want to do one for Max. Um, Takata nanaki, you took us a cotton and a nyaka. Tunsia katana nyakati. Turiana katakao. Hariana katu, so cotuna. Horu katania yaki. Toro katana. Aria katania yakatakana. Hariana ka. Tonaki yakati aliaka. Tonaka liakata, Tonsanana, Ariana Kataka, Tonia Cassia Cati, Tona Katana, Aliana Ka, Oscotona no Cotuku, Roco Tatana Nakatuku, Rocota Tatiana Catu, Holos Cotona no Co, Oronani Aliaca, Hasatu Rutu, Orona Haracatuku, Oscoto. Haranaka Hosana Halia Soturoku. Love transcends every now. Love transcends through every now into the present, into the past, into the future. It becomes all things to all people. It becomes that which cannot be lived without, cannot be not identified. It is that which is identified internationally and no, universally. 
let this now pervade through every thing and every person. Feel it. Feel it in yourselves that the love is now and eternal. Thank you. Roxy, do you have anything? I have a message from the Nimikoto. Thank you. Very good. Stand by. Konia Tokoshina. Kumba. Chakakuko, Chakanatoto, Shakanakano, Tohono, Shakono, Shinata, Yako, Kokuma, Yena, Toshneer, Dono, Shumbariaka, Hoto. This is a brief message, no rebuttal required. This is only an offering. As long as everybody on this density validates a flag, a race, a class, any sort of separation, then you will only energize and sustain that class, that flag, that country, that separation. This is all. Thank you. Yeah, that's my understanding. Too. Wonderful. Thank Beautiful. you. Beautiful. Yeah, I, I just can agree. I mean, um, yeah, it's, it's all said there. Uh, the flag is wonderful, but Blending of the flags is even more wonderful. <coughs> yeah, I think it's happening. It's 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 shifting, but you know, it's just it's just to have the awareness. As long as we, you know, I mean, the the always thing the thing that validates with me. It's really, um, I don't know if it's frustrating, but it's awareness, and it's like when a guy comes out of prison, he's a felon. He has to carry that stigmatism for the rest of his life with our culture now. And then as long as people keep telling him he's a felon, what's he going to act like? Ta-da! A felon. And that's, and that's like that kind of thing. So I don't choose to do that. But I think that's shifting. Well, I know it is. I, I know it is, too, yes. Thank yeah. you for that. That's a great, that's a great thought. Thank you. Yeah. I totally you? agree with that, too. Yes. I love that. Yes. I love that. Awesome, awesome. I know. Beautiful. Yeah, um, I, mean, I forgot to invite Jesus again, but yeah, let's do him as often as, as it is appropriate. Oh, okay. Well, I, I'm surprised he came two days in a row. Uh, but <laughs> time is nothing for him, why not? I know, well, <laughs> yeah, but I didn't know if he had that much to say. To... Well, Obviously, he did. <clears throat> All right. Um, thank you, everybody, and... Um, much love and appreciation. Thank you very much. Thanks for being. I love, love you all. all. Really. Be, love be you. enjoyed and have love fun. You. Thank love you. you. Bye. I can hardly wait to meet you all. Thank oh. you and blessings. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Max. Thank you, Jim. See you all on the colony. Thanks, Thanks for audience. It was energy we have different with your energy. It was more. Wow. Yeah. wow. We had four visitors today. That's yeah. cool. Bye. Have a good day. Do you ever plan on having like everybody, I mean, visiting those